Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. If it wasn't for Andrew's teachings, I would never be where I am today. I would never have victory. I would be living a life of defeat. It was Andrew's teaching that allowed me to develop that faith. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Tuesday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. This week, I'm continuing to share about don't limit God. This is something God spoke to me January the 31st, 2002. And for two weeks, I've been contrasting where we were back 20 years ago with where we are now. I've got this brand new series that is uh, the last two weeks and then this week's worth of television entitled Don't Limit God 20 Years Later. And I tell you, it is phenomenal what God has done. We have had a hundredfold increase in nearly every area. It's just amazing what God has done. And the good news is that what God has done in my life and ministry through not limiting God, He wants to do in your life. God has great plans for each one of us. And I think that the average person is shooting at nothing and hitting it every time. I, I spent quite a bit of time talking about things that hindered me from really taking the limits off God and just going for it. And complacency was one. Uh, fear of failure, fear of risk, uh, fear of persecution, fear of getting lifted up with pride and things like that. Those were things that hindered me. But boy, when I finally passed that thing and decided, all right, I'm going to believe God, I've seen miraculous results. And yesterday, I started sharing with you that once I knew what God's plan for my life was and for this ministry and the extent that He wanted us to reach, and once I dealt with those four areas that I was talking about, then I started dreaming and I started just imagining what God wanted me to do. You know, I have known for 50-something years that God wanted me to have a ministry that reached people all over the world. But in the beginning, man, I was having Bible studies with four and five people come, and I just had to focus on where I was. Then I pastored three little churches over a six-year uh, span of time. The largest crowd I ever had there was 100 people. I had to focus on that. And then I started traveling and ministering. And, and so anyway, for a long period of time, for 30-something years, it was just dealing with where I was and preparing for the day. But when we started on television, the Lord uh, just started really expanding this ministry. And 20 years ago, January 31st, 2002, the Lord told me that it was time for me to take the limits off and to begin to start seeing the vision He had placed in my heart over 30 years before to come to pass. And so one of the ways that I did that was to just start imagining what I knew was God's will for my life. I imagined it coming to pass. I used this verse yesterday out of Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3. And it says, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed upon thee, because he trusteth in thee. And the word for mind there is the Hebrew word, Y-E-T-S-E-R, and it means conception. Your mind, and specifically this is talking about the mind of your heart, because I combined this verse with Genesis chapter 6 and uh, verse 5, and it's the exact same Hebrew word that is used when it says, God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. That word imagination there is the exact same Hebrew word that was translated mind over in Isaiah 26, 3. And so you're, it says the imagination of the thoughts of his heart. So you can think with your mind and then you can think with your heart. You know, it's hard for me to express these things because this is something that most people don't really pay attention to. But I can promise you, you know the difference between thinking with your mind and thinking with your heart. You know, I'm in a situation right now where we, uh, I was meeting with some of my staff and they were wanting me to uh, establish all of the guest speakers that we were going to have for an entire year in advance. 
and uh, they we went out to eat and they were they were waiting on my answer and we came up with all of the potentials but I basically had to tell them I said look I'm not going to make a decision just here out of my head and just pick these people I want to think about this and I didn't use this terminology but uh, based on what we're saying right here I want to think about this with my heart not just my head I want to be led by God in this rather than me just make a decision based on information. Now again, a lot of people don't understand this, but over the years, I've been walking with the Lord now for 50, nearly 54 years. And over the years, I have learned the difference between me making decisions with my head just based on intellect, logic, circumstances look like they dictate this, and then me making a decision with my heart. You know, one of the examples of this, and there's many of them, but I was in a situation where I was pastoring a little church in Pritchett, Colorado, and the two elders that we had were custom combiners, and they followed the weed harvest, and it was getting time for them to leave, and there was only 100 people in the church, but they felt that I needed an elder to stay with me, and they were going to both be leaving on weed harvest, and so they wanted to appoint a new elder, and so... I was fine with that. I didn't mind having another elder that stayed there and helped me run the church. But they all suggested that I get this one guy, and I just said, no, I don't feel peace about it. You know, Colossians 3, 15, let the peace of God rule in your heart. And I just said, no, I don't feel peace about it. And they said, well, why? What's wrong with him? And there was no reason. I didn't have anything against this guy. This guy had actually been friendly to me. He was one of the very first people that uh, embraced me and what I was teaching when I went to that church. In the natural, there was no reason not to accept this guy as an elder, except that I just didn't feel peace about it. So with my head, it made sense, but with my heart, I didn't feel right about it. And so anyway, it got closer to the time that they had to leave. They said, you've got to make a decision. And so I finally, just because I didn't know who else to uh, nominate and I didn't have any other uh, arguments, I didn't have any logical argument against it, I went ahead and put this guy in as an elder. They left on their um, wheat harvest And I mean, this guy turned into Satan personified, got up and lied about me, tried to take over the church. It was bad. And when that happened, I said, I knew that I wasn't supposed to do that. I didn't know it with my head. I couldn't give you a single reason. Everything in the natural looked right, but with my heart, I knew better. Now, again, you may not have sat down and analyzed this, but I believe that every person watching this at some time or another has had to make decisions, and this is the path that it looked logical, what everybody told you to do, but your heart was drawing you another way. So you can think with your heart. That's your imagination is a part of this. You have to be able to see things. So when it comes to, you know, putting down these speakers that I'm going to have at my conferences, I've got a list of potential speakers. I've got all of the slots that need to be filled and things, but I am thinking about it with my heart. And I'm sitting there using my imagination. If I ask this person, how's that going to work out? What can I see? And I will sit there, and in my heart, I will sit there and plug these people into those situations until all of a sudden, somebody, I can just see that this is going to work. This is who God wants me to have. I don't know if that, if you can relate to what I'm saying, but there's things in each one of your lives that we need to let our heart start dictating more of our things instead of just using your head. Now, I'm not saying that you turn off your brain and that you don't use logic and that you don't look at situations and think things through, but I'm saying that, you know, here's another way of saying this. It's over in uh, Ephesians chapter 4. Let me read this passage to you. I spent one entire year studying in Ephesians chapter 4, and I would turn to other scriptures, but only as they related to these verses. And here in Ephesians chapter 4, in verse 17, it says, This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. 
The word vanity here, it literally means in the Greek, the Greek word that was translated vanity, it means transientness and inutility. And then in the next verse, it says, having the understanding darkened. The word for understanding here is the Greek word dianoia. And it's the same word that was translated over here in Ephesians chapter 1 in verse 18. It says, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may see what is the hope of His calling and what the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of His power. And this word dianoia that is translated understanding in these two places, it literally means deep thought. So you can think on a surface level. And let me say it this way. I think you have to use this surface level thinking to approach certain things. It's not like you turn your mental mind off, but you can think with your heart too. And again, I refer back to Genesis chapter 6, verse 5, where the Lord says that the imaginations of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And so your heart can think. You can think on a heart level. You know, you may say something to people, but in your heart, you know differently. And many of us just operate on this surface level, but this word dianoia means deep thought. And if you just walk in the vanity of your mind, then your understanding, this deep thought, is darkened on the inside of you. And I tell you there, I would say that people that don't know the Lord nearly think exclusively on a surface level, just on a very shallow way of thinking about things. They don't think things through. And sadly, even many Christians that now have the mind of Christ in them, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16, you've been renewed in knowledge after the image of Him that created Him. Even Christians that have access to this mind of Christ sometimes only think on a surface level. They just, they look at circumstances and they make their decisions based on just these natural things and they don't let their heart the part of them that has the mind of Christ, that's been renewed in knowledge, that has an unction from the Holy One and knows all things, they don't minister from their heart. In Proverbs chapter 4, it says, Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it proceed the issues of life. I'm telling you, you need to, yes, use your mind for something besides a hat rack, but it's actually your heart that you should let your heart dictate to you. You should let this new born-again person, and an important part of that is your imagination. Again, Isaiah 26, 3, the Lord will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed upon him. That word Y-E-T-S-E-R means conception, and it's the exact same word that was translated imagination in Genesis chapter 6 and verse 5. So your imagination is the thoughts of your heart That's where you conceive things. And when the Lord shows you that He wants to do something in your life, you need to take that revelation from God and conceive it in your imagination, the thoughts of your heart, and you need to see this coming to pass. Man, that's powerful. Again, I don't know... If this, I don't know if you're understanding and receiving exactly what I'm saying. I'm trying the best I know how to communicate this, but this revolutionized my life. I knew intellectually from day one when God touched my life that the things He had done in me were so awesome that I wanted to share them with the entire world. And I would say that within a month or two of my experience in 1968, I believed that I was going to share the truths of God's Word all over the world. Now, how I got from where I was to where God wanted me to be, I had no clue. I didn't know any of the details, but I could see what the end result was going to be, that I was going to be touching people all over the world. And for a period of time, the Lord told me, forget about Uh, you know, the end result. Right now, you just need to establish yourself. You need to renew your mind. You need to get into the words. You need to gain experience. You need to grow. You need to mature. So I'd say for 20 or 30 years, I was just focused on where I was at that time. 
BUT WHEN IT FINALLY CAME TIME AND THE LORD TOLD ME THAT NOW I WANT YOU TO START DREAMING BIG, THIS IS ONE OF THE THINGS THAT JUST REVOLUTIONIZED MY LIFE. I BEGAN TO START DREAMING BIG. AND PRIOR TO THAT TIME, I WOULDN'T DO IT. DID YOU KNOW THAT MOST PEOPLE WILL RIDICULE YOU AND MAKE FUN OF YOU WHEN YOU START SPEAKING ABOUT DOING SOMETHING AWESOME, ABOUT, YOU KNOW, SEEING GREAT INCREASE IN FINANCES OR IN YOUR BUSINESS OR IN, YOU KNOW, JUST WHATEVER IT IS. MOST PEOPLE WILL RIDICULE THAT. MOST PEOPLE WILL ACTUALLY TRY AND KNOCK YOU DOWN BECAUSE MOST PEOPLE ARE NOT LIVING IN GOD'S BEST. THEY AREN'T EXPERIENCING AWESOME THINGS. AND IF YOU COME ALONG AND START SAYING THAT GOD HAS SPOKEN TO YOU AND THAT YOU'RE GOING TO SEE THIS BIG THING HAPPEN, THEY EITHER HAVE TO SIT THERE AND SAY, WELL, I GUESS I SHOULD BE BELIEVING GOD, AND THEY HAVE TO COME UP TO THAT LEVEL, OR IT'S EASIER TO JUST KNOCK YOU DOWN AND TO CRITICIZE YOU. AND SO MOST PEOPLE, THEY, it, they WILL JUST TRY AND PULL YOU DOWN TO THEIR LEVEL. THEY DON'T WANT YOU TO GET YOUR HOPES UP. DID YOU KNOW WHEN YOU GO TO A DOCTOR, DOCTORS, BECAUSE OF LIABILITY ISSUES, THEY DON'T WANT TO GET YOUR HOPES UP. THEY DON'T WANT YOU TO GET TO EXPECTING THINGS. THEY WILL GIVE YOU WORST CASE SCENARIO. BUT THAT'S ONE OF THE WORST THINGS THAT CAN HAPPEN. AND MOST PEOPLE, THEY JUST REALLY ARE, are TAMPING DOWN ALL OF THEIR DREAMS AND CONSTANTLY TRYING TO, YOU KNOW, uh, ADJUST AND SAY, WELL, YOU KNOW, I SHOULDN'T DREAM SO BIG. I SHOULDN'T THINK SO BIG. I'M TELLING YOU, YOU CAN'T OUTDREAM GOD. GOD IS HUGE. GOD IS BIG. GOD WANTS TO DO GREAT THINGS IN OUR LIFE. NOW, HE WON'T DO WITH YOU EXACTLY WHAT HE DOES WITH ME, BUT CONCERNING WHATEVER IT IS THAT GOD WANTS YOU TO DO, I GUARANTEE YOU, YOUR LIFE OUGHT TO BE SUPERNATURAL. IF IT'S NOT SUPERNATURAL, IT'S SUPERFICIAL. YOU OUGHT TO BE ABLE TO LOOK AT YOUR LIFE AND TO BE ABLE TO CREDIT GOD AND SAY, WITHOUT GOD, I COULDN'T HAVE DONE THIS. IF YOU CAN LOOK AT YOUR LIFE AND IF YOU CAN JUSTIFY EVERYTHING THAT'S HAPPENING AS I DID THIS, I'M A SELF-MADE MAN OR WOMAN, I BELIEVE YOU'VE MISSED GOD. GOD WANTS YOU TO DO SOMETHING THAT'S BEYOND YOURSELF. AND WHEN YOU START TALKING THIS WAY AND DREAMING THIS WAY, YOU'RE GOING TO HAVE LOTS OF PEOPLE COME OUT AGAINST YOU AND CRITICIZE YOU BECAUSE IF YOU'RE RIGHT, THEN THEY'RE WRONG. AND RATHER THAN ADMIT THAT THEY'RE WRONG AND COME UP TO YOUR LEVEL, THEY'LL TRY AND PULL YOU DOWN TO THEIR LEVEL. AND SO YOU'RE JUST GOING TO FACE A LOT OF RESISTANCE, BUT I'M TELLING YOU THAT GOD WANTS YOU TO DREAM BIG. SO WHEN THIS HAPPENED IN MY LIFE, WE WERE IN THE PROCESS OF LOOKING FOR A NEW FACILITY. WE HAD OUTGROWN THE 14,600 SQUARE FOOT BUILDING THAT OUR MINISTRY HAD BEEN IN FOR 12 YEARS. AND WE WERE BELIEVING FOR A NEW BUILDING. AND uh, MY WIFE, SHE CAME OUT AND SHE SAW A, a 30,000 SQUARE FOOT BUILDING AND SHE THOUGHT, WELL, MAN, THAT'S BOUND TO BE ABLE TO HOLD US THE REST OF THEIR LIFE. AND I SAID, NO, IT'S GOING TO BE MUCH, MUCH BIGGER THAN THAT. AND SO I ACTUALLY, I WAS IN A 14,000 square, 600 SQUARE FOOT BUILDING AND I ACTUALLY WENT AND BOUGHT A 110,000 SQUARE FOOT BUILDING. NOW THAT WAS HUGE. THAT WAS NEARLY 10 TIMES AS BIG AS WE WERE. AND YET WHEN WE BOUGHT IT, I REMEMBER TELLING EVERYBODY, I SAID, THIS MIGHT LAST US FIVE YEARS OR SIX YEARS, BUT WE'LL BE OUT OF HERE PRETTY SOON. I JUST STARTED DREAMING BIG. AND DID YOU KNOW THAT WE WENT FROM 14,600 TO THAT 110,000? NOW WE ARE, WE REMOVED TO WOODLAND PARK, COLORADO, AND ALTOGETHER WE HAVE OVER 666,000 SQUARE FEET. I DON'T KNOW WHAT THAT DIFFERENCE IS, BUT IT'S HUGE. AND I'M BUILDING MORE. IT WON'T BE VERY LONG UNTIL WE HAVE OVER A MILLION SQUARE FEET OF OFFICE SPACE AND BIBLE COLLEGE AND STUDENT HOUSING AND THINGS LIKE THIS. AND I, I BELIEVE THAT IT'S JUST GOING TO CONTINUE TO GO UP. THAT'S A HUGE INCREASE. AND DID YOU KNOW THE WAY I GOT THERE, I STARTED JUST DREAMING. I LOOKED AT ALL OF THE OPTIONS, AND I JUST STARTED DREAMING, HOW COULD WE FIT INTO THIS SPACE? I REMEMBER WE BOUGHT A BUILDING THAT THIS FIRST 110,000 SQUARE FEET THAT WE MOVED INTO, uh, THERE WAS 10,000 SQUARE FEET OF IT THAT WAS FINISHED OUT, OFFICE SPACE THAT WE COULD USE, AND THE REST WAS AN OPEN WAREHOUSE. AND SO I HAD MY BUILDER GO AND PUT TAPE DOWN ON THE FLOOR WHERE EVERY... WE DESIGNED HOW WE WOULD BUILD THIS THING, AND THEN HE... WE DIDN'T HAVE THE MONEY TO BUILD IT, 
And I had already determined that I was going to do it debt free. So what I had him do was to take those building plans and put uh, duct tape on the floor where every wall, where every door was, where every hallway, everything. And I would spend hours, sometimes two or three hours a night after everybody is gone. And I'd just walk around that space, a hundred thousand square feet. And I would walk and I would see these walls and I would see these things. And I, I wouldn't step over the tape. Actually, as I was giving other people tours and showing them what we were going to do, some people would start to step over the tape and I'd say, wait, hey, there's a wall there. Here's the hallway. And I'd open the door and People thought I was crazy, but you know what I was doing? I was imagining. I was seeing that. I actually put five gallon buckets out and I put eight by 10, I mean, uh, four by eight sheets of plywood on top of them and made a little stage. And I stood on top of that and I preached sermons in our auditorium. And I saw that place full of people and I saw myself ministering to people. And I know some of you think I'm weird, but I tell you, I think you're weird not to use the imagination that God has given you. This is where you conceive things. And I saw this. I spent, I don't even know, but hundreds of hours walking and seeing things coming to pass. And did you know that once I got it in my heart, and it takes time for you to be able to see it. It doesn't just, it's not just automatic. It's not the first thought that comes to you. But as you meditate on things, I saw those buildings. I saw those walls going up and it took 14 months. But we, I, I went from having no money to having that completely paid for, for $3.2 million and it was built. And when we actually moved into that building, Man, people were just going wild because they saw what had happened and they knew where we came from. And yet I was praising God and I was praise, I was thankful for it, but I wasn't overwhelmed. And I remember somebody coming up and saying, aren't you excited? You don't act excited over this. And I told him, I said, yes, I'm excited, but you know what? I've been seeing this for 14 months. I've already seen it. I saw it with my heart. And what I saw with my heart was so real that when I saw it with my eyes, it wasn't surprising. It didn't bless me that much because I already had it in my heart. I had seen it in my imagination. And that's the reason that I saw it with my physical eyes. If you can't see it with your heart, you can't see it with your physical eyes. And this is where so many people are missing it. I'm out of time today, but I do. I have a lot more to share, and I'm going to continue to talk about this all week. We've got this free little sticker that we're giving away entitled Don't Limit God. This is something you need to put up and remind yourself of this. I've got this teaching, Don't Limit God, 20 years later in either CD or DVD that was taken from television. And then we have my original book that I wrote about 19 years ago on this. We also have a study guide. If you'll listen, our announcer will give you all of the information and please call or write today to receive these products. Now that we've got our garage paid off, I'm going full steam ahead on building student housing. We're breaking ground in the spring and we are believing that by the fall of 2023, we are gonna have student housing. It just depends on how the response goes as to how quickly we can build it. And so I'd like to encourage you to pray about becoming a foundation builder with us. That's what we call this partnership for building out our Caris Bible College. Check it out at awmi.net. Coach Tony and also JB, you know, we started this about two years ago, uh, talking about the kneeling issue in the NFL. And you were sharing with me some of the background stories behind these people. And we just got to saying, we need to get these stories out there because there is another side. I'm Tony Dungy and I'm really excited about a new series I've been working on with James Brown called Beyond the Game. You've been called Captain Kirk, <laughs> yeah. you know, a leader of men. Jesus ultimately did that better than anyone and, uh, and his influence to this day is greater than anyone's. And so I look to him, look to the Bible, look to scripture and, and the gospels to say, how did he lead? What did he do? 
and then try to live that out. Coaches and athletes in your favorite sports, and you get to see a side of them that we don't always get to see, their face side. We have so much negative press about athletes and, you know, spousal abuse and all kinds of things going on. And I think that this is really going to make a difference for people to see that there's some really godly people out there. Clearly, it's the aberrant behavior of a few that gets the majority of the headlines. So it's not only good for the athletes, but I know that you guys sometimes are just throttled in what you can say about the Lord. We get so frustrated, especially when we'll go out and do a feature piece, uh, but it has to get cut down into a one minute or two minute interview. And the audience can't really hear what is in the heart of these men. We're thankful to you, as Tony said, to give us this platform, Andrew. We'd love to have your help. Go to beyondthegame.co to find out details. Learn how to take the limits off God when you get Andrew's new series, Don't Limit God, 20 Years Later. Don't Limit God, 20 Years Later is available in a CD or DVD album made from our daily television broadcast. Also available today is the Don't Limit God book and companion study guide. Each of these resources are available for a gift of any amount when you contact us. This entire series is also available for audio download absolutely free from our website. Also, as a special offer, Andrew is giving away the Don't Limit God sticker as his free gift to you when you write or call. This offer is limited to one free sticker per household and is available in the US, UK, Canada, and Australia. Contact us today to receive your free sticker. We also want to remind you of Andrew's Living Commentary software. The Living Commentary includes more than 50 years of Andrew's Bible study notes and personal encounters with God. Get Andrew's Living Commentary today for $120. We want to say a special thank you to the Grace Partners of Andrew Womack Ministries. Your gifts make it possible to put free ministry materials into the hands of many people in need. If you're not already a Grace Partner, we ask you to pray about becoming one today. You can become a Grace Partner through our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download additional free resources. You can also order resources or receive prayer by calling our helpline at 719-635-1111. Our helpline is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. To write us, use the address on your screen. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. Gospeltruth.tv provides free 24 seven access to biblical teaching you can trust. Our Grace and Faith channel features teaching from Andrew Womack and other ministers he's personally invited to share with you. Watch daily live programming, including Bible studies and the Truth and Liberty Coalition, as well as conferences, miraculous testimonies, life-changing stories, and financial breakthroughs. Start watching for free today. Visit gospeltruth.tv for biblical teaching you can trust.